Greetings, everybody. Hope you are all well, having a good day so far. My name is Father Joe. I'm a priest here at Blessed Trinity Parish in Westford Littleton, very, very happily. I'm very happy to be with you. I have a couple questions, three questions to be exact, two of which I know already. I'm going to start with question number two, and then I'm going to go to question number one, if that's okay with you. I'm going to do it anyway. Question number two is, I heard Father Peter's remarks that immediately sets off red flags to me whenever people hear Father Peter's remarks, but this particular individual did. I heard Father Peter's remarks regarding the bishop's vote on restrictions to receive communion if you are pro-abortion, as is President Biden. There is separation of church and state involved. My question is, is it a mortal sin just to have an opinion? I was taught in parochial school that the answer is no. And no is the correct answer to that question. That's the first question in number two. So regardless of opinion, should a person be allowed to receive the Eucharist if that person has not committed a mortal sin? The answer to that question is yes. And I'm just going to add my own little quip here. In 39 years, I have never, ever refused anyone the Eucharist. And I am not about to start now. How in the world did we get to this point in the first place? What would Jesus do? I just can't imagine him receiving anyone. And the last analysis, we're all going to have to answer to our maker. And this is really a personal question between us and our God. And God will hold us accountable in a way that's just, wise, and fair, in a way that no one else can. I would prefer to leave that to God. The next question has to do with purgatory. What is purgatory and does everybody go? So what does the catechism say? Hopefully you all have a catechism of the Catholic Church and you are using it as reference material because it's all in there. Purgatory is what we call the final purification. All who die in the grace of God and God's friendship, all who die in God's grace and friendship but still are imperfectly purified, are indeed assured of their eternal salvation. But after death, they undergo a purification so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter the joy of heaven. We call this purification, or this final purification, purgatory, which is entirely different from the eternal punishment of those who are damned to the eternal fires of hell. It's totally different from that. So this being said, it's appropriate for us to pray for the souls of the faithful departed, as hopefully many of us are already doing, as an ancient homily of St. John Chrysostom beautifully points out, and I quote this golden mouth, St. John Chrysostom, let us help and commemorate them let us not hesitate to help those who have died and to offer our prayers for them. We recently had a beautiful Mass on Memorial Day at St. Catherine's Cemetery, and it gave us a magnificent opportunity to pray for our loved ones who have died in that beautiful setting there. And it's very, very appropriate that we do that every now and then. Does everybody go to purgatory? I wish I knew. I really do not know. We simply here need to trust in God's wisdom, in God's judgment, in God's fairness, in God's mercy. God alone decides, and we simply need to let God be God. I think I have one more surprise question for you. It's for me, too. Here we go. Drum roll, please. 
what were your parents' reactions when you told them that you wanted to become a priest? When I told my mother I was doing the dishes with her, and when I told her that I was seriously considering entering the seminary to study for the priesthood, she dropped all the dishes that she had in her hands, and she started to cry. I said, Mom, I thought you'd be happy. And she said to me, Joe, I want you to be happy. And I said to her, Mom, what makes you think that I won't be happy as a priest? And she said, well, as a priest, you have to give up a lot of things. And I'll never forget what I said to her. I was probably only 17 or 18 years old at the time. And I said to her, Mom, as a parent, as parents, you and Dad had, have had to give up a lot for me. And I would dare say that you have given up more for me than I will ever have to give up as a priest. And to this day, I really and truly believe that. When I see all the sacrifices that my parents made for me and that parents are making for their kids today. So at first, it was a traumatic thing when um, I told them. My dad eventually came into the room and we had a nice little chat and they became my staunchest supporters. But at first, I think I caught them a little off guard. But thanks be to God, they were both able to see me through the seminary, see me ordained, and, and I was grateful for their support. I still am, even though both of them have gone to God. Hope that does it for this segment. Thank you so much. Blessings on you, good health, and I wish you and all of your loved ones a very enjoyable and replenishing summertime. Blessings.